Hey everybody, it's Ross. Uh, we're in the front of the house by the main street here, and I thought I would document my blueberries before it gets dark. I know it's tough to see these plants and you can't really see the blueberries, but they're here. And I'm gonna bring you guys in close to see just how productive these plants actually are. And I did a number of videos um, on blueberries, but nothing really all that great, I would say. Um, we're now getting these plants, I think, in their fourth season. I had created this whole bed here purely out of peat moss. We had a, a big shade tree that used to be here. And the shade tree um, looks honestly just like this guy over here. Um, so really quite massive. Excuse the camera there. Um, but I couldn't really dig really far down into the soil because there were so many roots left over from that big shade tree. So what I decided to do was actually create myself a, a bed on top of the clay here. And we made it purely out of peat moss because I figured peat moss is cheap and I didn't you know, make wooden sides to it or anything. It's a natural raised bed. But uh, these blueberries were planted in 100% peat moss on top of the native clay here. Now, that really is a great thing for a couple reasons. One, the pH of the soil is really low. It's, it's what it should be for blueberries. Um, you want it somewhere between a five and a six. And actually, the, uh, I have two blueberry plants over here that I just threw in the ground to see if they would succeed um, in the native clay. And I've realized that they actually do really well. They're very healthy plants. They also are starting to fruit. This one's called um, Chippewa. It's a different type of blueberry. It's supposed to have more of a wild flavor to it. And I find it does. It actually does have a more wild blueberry flavor. So it's quite different, more interesting, and it's actually very good. I think it's really good. Probably better than all the other blueberries I grow, believe it or not. But, um, these over here in the native clay do fantastic, but I've realized that my native clay actually is around a pH of six. So that's why the blueberries do so well here. Even this variety is starting to ripen up, but it, they're really uh, rock stars here in my climate, in my yard, because of the soil pH. I could plant them pretty much anywhere in my yard. Also, the clay holds a ton of moisture, and therefore, because the clay hold so much moisture, they don't dry out. And those are really the two requirements in the soil. That's really what makes growing blueberries so difficult is the, is the soil. You need to have the right moisture and a low enough pH. And you can see just by giving you, even though it's so dark here guys, and I apologize, you can see all these clusters of fruit. It's just insane um, how many blueberries this, these put out. This variety over here, just in this little area is just like mesmerizing, I think. Um, and it's also, these are really big blueberries. This is a variety that puts out some that are the size of my thumb. And it's called um, Chandler. It's really a standard in northern climates. And that's something you need to worry about with most of these blueberries. Not just the soil, but if you're thinking about growing them, consider um, the variety for sure. And think about honestly um, where you are growing them and what chill hours you have. So you need to really pay attention to that. There's varieties that actually now require no chill hours. Um, there's some varieties that require maybe 100 or 200 and those are grown you know in northern parts of Florida, maybe in California as well. Those are supposed to be really good by the way. And then there is more some that are grown for the south, maybe rabbit eyes, there's even some that grow low along the ground. And uh, my friend Michelle actually has one. She gave me two. And they are ground cover blueberries. And these you might see in fields of blueberries. And they produce much smaller sized blueberries. And they're also supposed to have a wild blueberry taste. This one's really small. Um, I imagine this is normally how big they are. And these are used for like processing. Tastes like a blueberry, but smaller and maybe has a more wild flavor like the Chippewa that I was mentioning. 
So honestly, um, I think they're pretty cool and you can do this so many different ways depending on where you live. And this, this blueberry here that I mentioned that we're growing in this climate is called the high bush blueberry. So they need lots of hours of chill. And that's really important because if you don't have enough, the blueberry in the right place, and let's say you're in an environment that gets 1200 hours of chill hours every winter, um, but you have a variety that only requires 200, well, as soon as those 200 hours are fulfilled, and then also it starts to get a little bit warm, they're gonna wake up, they're gonna leaf out, they're gonna flower, and then a late frost is gonna come in. So those are really the two big things you have to worry about. And um, I know there is some, pe some of you guys out there, unfortunately, that do just struggle with having the right pH. And for those of you that have that issue, I would just recommend growing something else called a, a Juneberry or a Saskatoon. And uh, they have many names. Service Berries is another one for the same thing. And they produce blueberries that are pretty much the same thing. They have, they're a little seedier, but they're a similar size. Um, some of them can form large trees, believe it or not, whereas these are really small bushes. Um, the high bush blueberries can get actually quite tall, but it takes a bit of time for them to really um, get to that size. Uh, the, uh, the, the Juneberry, though, is just one of those plants that, again, is just a lot different in terms of how it needs to grow. Like, the growing requirements are a lot simpler. You don't need the the crazy pH that is supposed to be really low and you don't need the um, the insane amount of moisture all the time. So this particular bed is really nice with this peat moss because first off it's low pH but also uh, I've covered it with tons of wood chips over the years so it really holds a lot of moisture and underneath is all that clay that holds even more moisture so in this climate it's like perfect having these blueberries in this particular location. Um, so technically, I guess there's not really a need for the Juneberry. I mean, they ripen around the same time. Um, you may make an argument that one tastes better than the other. You may make an argument that maybe, you know, there's some small difference between the two, but between all of us here in the country, in the United States, most climates, we can grow some sort of blueberry here. And I, really would make an argument that they're one of the best things to grow because you can do so much with them. They're good, not just fresh, but in every aspect of processing blueberry pancakes, um, jams and jellies and pies, blueberry pie is like my favorite type of pie. So if I'm thinking about something that I want in this location, honestly, the blueberry is the best thing that grows here. It really is. I think this location's meant for blueberries in a way. Um, so yeah, uh, that's my little spiel here, my little video guys on the blueberries and, you know, be patient with them because they do take some time, but I'll, I will say that in the first couple years, they can produce not a ton of fruit, but they'll give you something. And really what you're looking for with maintaining them is just making sure they got enough water, checking the soil pH every year, you do some pruning around year three to five. You take out some of the larger, the larger uh, canes here at the base of the plant. You know, you come down in here really low and you inspect the base and take out some of that older wood. And that's just sort of the maintenance every year. It really, it really is quite simple and an easy thing to grow and there's just really no reason to grow blueberries. So um, yeah, I hope you guys stuck with me here even though it's so dark and it's hard to see anything. <laughs> But we've actually got one, two, three, four, five, six varieties of blueberries here in the yard on this location. And I have to say that this is plenty for a family. Um, I can attest that I just can come out here every day and eat as many blueberries as I want. And uh, for a family of four, I would say you probably need one, maybe, you know, a total of maybe six blueberry plants and you'd be fine. Um, even if they're coming out here like every day, uh, they're almost endless, these things. And if you get the right varieties, they'll be ripening in succession and not at once. Um, or you may want to get similar varieties to have them ripen all at once to then do a lot of processing. So 
yeah, thank you guys here so much for watching this one. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe. Check out our blog, figboss.com. See everybody soon. Take care.